Hello and welcome to another episode of the SciShow Talk Show, the thing on SciShow that we do where we talk to cool people. Today we have a very special guest, local celebrity, Mark, Mark Haka. From no celebrity, no, no. You are the chief meteorologist at KECI, and you've been doing it for 14 years. 14. Everybody knows you. I'm telling you, I see. Like I'll be in the car with my friends, <laughs> and they'll see you walking down the street down to. Oh my God! <laughs> You're totally famous. I'm just a middle-aged guy that loves to tell the weather story. And that's what we're gonna do today. So Mark saw our episode on why tornadoes hate the United States, um, and that makes me super nervous. So first I have to ask, was it okay? It was okay. It was you, okay, you, but it you, wasn't you, great. No, it, no, it was, it was good. I mean, you, you covered the three main air masses. Okay. Hot dry from the southwest, moist and warm air coming up from the Gulf of Mexico, and cold air coming down from the north. Okay. So very good. So that's that's the that's the recipe. That's the recipe. Uh, and by the way, I'm from Kansas. Okay. So you know your tornadoes. And I, as much as I love Missoula, I miss the tornadoes. I miss the thunderstorms oh, of Florida. Yes. Yeah. You can't. We get like four thunderstorms. thunderstorms a year here. So are you some? Do you love tornadoes? Are you a tornado guy? I have you ever seen or been in a tornado? Being I from Kansas? have seen. In fact, September twentieth, nineteen sixty-seven. September twentieth, by the way, is today. I know this is so. So ironic. it's not the day that you're watching this, but it's the day we're filming it. So it's. It's your tornado versary. My brother's birthday, and I was seven years old. I was in the backyard playing, and my dad all of a sudden looked to the west and he said, oh my gosh, look, a tornado. And it was a wimpy tornado, probably a zero or one mm -hmm. on the scale. Uh, and that was the first time I really noticed the weather. I mean, mm -hmm. it was something. And you know, watching The Wizard of Oz mm -hmm. at a very young age, I love The Wizard of Oz. I was kind of a strange kid. I loved to watch The Wizard of Oz, wished for tornadoes while listening to The Sound of Music. Mm. Very odd. It's beautiful. <laughs> I knew it would <laughs> The hills are alive. <laughs> but anyway, that, and then um, I, I, I'm very good with dates, but uh, October 9th, 1970, in Kansas, we got like nine inches of snow. Mm. A very, I remember weird, right? dad turning on, that's very unusual. Okay. So that impressed me. And then finally, Christmas Eve 1973, we had an inch ice, an ice storm, inch of ice covering everything, and then a foot of snow the next day on top Ooh, of that. Yeah, that's fine. And that sealed my interest in love of weather. <laughs> it's like, oh, wow, this is fantastic. Is there any other interesting tornado facts that you? Um, well, maybe I can stump you. Oh, we're going to do Stump Hank. Because I heard that that's kind of a deal. <laughs> Are you stumped often? Oh, I'm stumped most of the time, <laughs> yeah. Okay, well, when I was growing up, I always heard this weird story about straw being driven into trees. Right, right, because it's going so fast. Because the wind blows so fast in a tornado, up to 300 miles per hour in a, an F5. Uh-huh. But come on, how can, that, how can that happen? Yeah. I mean, no, it, would it would be crushed. It would be crushed. When it would yeah, hit the tree. Yeah, you would think that it would, yeah, it would, it would splinter. So, Even if it's going fast enough, uh, straw is not as hard as trees. Correct. Uh, and I've seen pictures of straw driven into trees. So there is something that happens. That so, so that's a thing. That's the thing. That's really a thing that happens. Yes. Oh, yeah, definitely. So, I, so you did stump me just now. Okay. Or is there more to it? No, that's it. Okay. But I have an explanation, obviously. Oh, so you... As to why the straw doesn't just splinter or exactly. shred or... During a violent windstorm, even during straight line winds, trees are bending and mm -hmm. churning, and the, the uh, trunk of the tree starts twisting to a certain extent. Oh. Course, unless, I mean, obviously with the strongest of tornadoes, the, t the tree is blown away right. and destroyed. But during you know, weak to moderate tornadoes, a tree trunk is twisted, and during those split seconds, you get little pores that open right. up. little fissures. And the straw pew, gets in there. And then the tree snaps back into place. Okay. That's how straw is. So is this a theory, or is this confirmed? This is confirmed. OK. Oh, oh absolutely. Wow, wow, wow. That's fascinating. Yeah. So for, for you know probably centuries, people have been being like, wow, oh, grass is being driven exactly. into the a tree. The winds were so strong, yeah. it's amazing. And then we figured it out. And then we figured it out. Oh. Yeah. One really other cool. phenomenon. Okay. It's known that especially the largest tornadoes, uh, for instance, back in uh, 1991, Wichita was hit by a tornado, and about 250 miles into the northeast in St. Joseph, Missouri, checks, styrofoam cups fell from a clear blue sky. 
that sounds beautiful. It does, it does. Did With you the say sound checks? of music playing. What? Did you say checks? Ch checks, that is in check, but you know, just like so, pieces of paper. So it's basically paper. money. Well, yes, <laughs> yes, exactly. That would be the best if a bank was destroyed and I know, 400 I, miles away, but, just money starts to rain down You know, down I've never heard of that. It, 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 we're not that Banks lucky. are pretty sturdy. Exactly, it, very good, yeah. yeah. Um, what happens during, and you mentioned the mesocyclone, mm -hmm. the updraft mm -hmm. in, a, in a thunderstorm. If there's the jet stream overhead, it's a, jet, it's a fast moving jet of stream, in simplistic terms, yeah. much stronger winds, okay? And you also mentioned, uh, I, I go in feet, the thunderstorms yeah. can be as high as 50, even 60,000 feet. So the updraft goes all the way up. Well, imagine this large tornado picking up all this very light debris. Now, mm -hmm. cars obviously are heavy, so they're gonna be tossed around at the surface, but you, you're gonna get styrofoam, styrofoam cups and things like that that are drawn all the mm -hmm. way through the updraft, and that light material gets caught up in the jet stream. And the, let's say the thunderstorm is moving along at 30 miles an hour. Well, we're talking 200 mile per hour jet stream. Mm. So that light debris gets caught up in, in the jet stream and then is taken downstream and then eventually falls even in places that are clear. Yeah, that makes sense. That's, God, it's so, it's amazing to me sometimes to think about how volatile that can be, that we even function on this planet. Exactly. That it even works, that it even like can be predictable enough and it can be you know, stable enough that we just aren't dying. You know, locking ourselves in our houses for well, six some months out of the year. <laughs> some people do that. Um, I actually hope weather will never be totally predictable. Oh, well, gosh, I would hope not. Uh, we need a little surprise in our lives. Yeah. Well, is that what you tell people who are like, what are you doing? This is, uh, you said, and then I had the picnic planned. Good excuse, huh? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the thing is, though, in, in TV uh, weather reporting, it's better to be wrong in a positive way than a negative way. Right. If I say uh, it's going to rain this Saturday and it ends up being sunny, they'll say, ah, he was wrong, but wow, what a nice day. Yeah. But if I say it's going to be sunny, and then it rains. People make plans and then it rains. It's like. So the trick is just to always say it's going to be terrible out. Yes. That or just and say maybe a lot too. <laughs> maybe, maybe not. Chances. Chances, exactly. What does it mean when you say that there's going to be a 40% chance of rain? Does that mean that it's going to be it's like a 40% so, yeah. chance in any particular place? It, it's a place? given area. Okay. Okay. Um, when zone forecasts are, are distributed, it's for a given area, and let's say a 10 county area, mm -hmm. all right? Well, if there's a 40%, just think of 40% 40, 40 coverage. Okay. Of, so 40% of, of that land's gonna get rained on. Exactly. Of course, there's gonna be the 60% yeah. that will not. Mm -hmm. And it's those people that are be going, well, you said 40%, that was a pretty good chance of rain. <laughs> Why didn't it rain? <laughs> so, and it's but, difficult to say, well, you didn't get the rain, but down the road they did. And mm -hmm. it was actually a fairly large coverage area. So I don't like to use percentages because people are, get confused <laughs> and they just, maybe we and should they get angry too. Maybe we should <laughs> teach people what percentages are. Probably a good idea. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, let's, let's work on that, okay? <laughs> um, fascinating. Wow, I want to have you back so we could talk about weather more. Oh, I, I would love to. I mean, as you know, my eyes are probably really bright right now. <laughs> tornadoes, I, it's my favorite subject. And I love Missoula, but believe it or not, I miss the thunderstorms, as yeah. you do, and the tornadoes. And obviously, I don't like death and destruction with tornadoes, but I'm, in my older age, I'd like to like, take a sabbatical and go chase tornadoes. I've never done it. No, I wouldn't. I would never do that. I would. <laughs> I crave the thought of it. That is not something that I crave. <laughs> well, uh, but weather isn't your forte either. No. So. Well, I mean, it is fascinating. Yeah. yeah. Um, so right now I'm craving uh, some animal accompaniment, maybe something fuzzy. Fuzzy and warm and loving? Yes. Okay. Jesse has arrived with magical transportation. <laughs> and you've switched places, everything. Uh, so you have something in a pouch. I have something. I have two somethings in my pouch. Oh, my goodness. That's a very cute pouch. <laughs> Would you like to meet them? Yes, please. This is Gizmo and Nemo. If you Aww. want to stick your arm out, I'm going to have them. Pour. You're going to pour animal onto me? Squeeze oh my god, oh my god, oh my god, they're so out. cute. <laughs> <gasps> oh There's, that my. is Nemo, and here's Gizmo. Oh, oh he was back in. All right, there you go, Gizmo. Oh and these god, are sugar gliders. Horrible. They are 
um, convergent mm -hmm. evolution for the um, flying squirrel. So they, the, they are not related to the flying squirrel, they but are not they, related. they act in the same way. They what are they look related very to? Oh, similar. I've look already been this. pooped on. Look at this, I got some on me too. It's exciting. Yeah, mo Ooh, just, just mere moments. <laughs> and let's um, load them up again. Oh, you're going to. Oh, you got, oh yeah, you got. Oh, oh fun. Mm -hmm. Yum, 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 yum. So they're marsupials. The females will have a little pouch. You can touch them, yeah. Soft, very, very nice. soft. Oh, and the male, oh, there's some oh, more. So much poop. <laughs> um, so and poopy. the males are not going to have a pouch. Instead, they have a bunch of scent glands to, mm -hmm. you know, Attract claim the their ladies. territory. Right. Well, mostly claiming okay. territory. Um, and they'll even claim their friends and family. Oh. I'll just so they're scent not just you. not just rubbing the tops of their heads and their armpits and stuff. They're also peeing all yeah. over <laughs> yeah. everything that they want to claim. Um, so did you give me the female? <laughs> two males. Oh, there's two males. Two males. So we're just we're we're all gonna get peed on. We're all gonna get peed saying. on. Okay. <laughs> now, what stands out on their face the most? Their giant <laughs> eyes. Huge yes. eyes. So they are nocturnal. They are nocturnal. Um, yes, they really really don't like the light. He's going to the bathroom again. Again. I love his. Just clearing out the middle of it, just yeah. sucking out the insides. Have you ever eaten a go-gurt? Yeah, yeah, and sure. You like cut the top off. Yeah, and, and like just squeeze like up. yeah. So they like rip the top, the head off, and like get all the goodies on the inside. Mm, so yeah, these guys are—they're they're pretty insectivorous, but uh, they will okay. also eat things like sap and uh, okay. <laughs> fruit. What you do, them, buddy? Well, my my shirt is too slippery. <laughs> Yeah, they're great Control hunters. The exactly, they're yeah. great hunters. They oh, have amazing oh, eyesight at night, and they can yeah. um, have that binocular vision. Oh, so much poop! Oh, front. and you peed on oh, me. Oh, Pete! Yeah, I got, I got everything. <laughs> are you gonna puke on me now? Come here. Where are you going? Puke. Come here. He's hiding. Here, come say hi to everyone. Okay, that's cute. There you go. That's there cute. There you go. Here you go. Yeah. Here. Oh, what's what's? Oh, Nemo. Where are you going? Nemo, I got, I got mealworms for you. Yeah. Oh yeah, I'll take that one. Okay, good. Mm, delicious. Yeah. <laughs> You're right up in my ear. Chewing in your ear. Yeah. Mm, delicious. Yeah. Mm -hmm. mm, Buckets. Mm. <laughs> Very cute animals. I imagine there's definitely a pet trade in these guys. Oh, huge, huge, yeah. huge. Um, these guys are still taken right out of the wild. Um, they're they're not endangered. They're not threatened. They're doing pretty good. Um, they've been able to adapt even with habitat loss. And. Uh, <laughs> um, but huge pet trade. I, I really wouldn't recommend these guys as a pet. I mean, some people make decent owners of these guys, but you really have to devote your life. They're, they're nocturnal. They're awake at night. So unless you're a nighttime person, you know, 10 p.m. to 6 a.m. <laughs> with animals that love to pee all over you and their home, and they're very energetic and fast, and they make little barking noises at night. Oh. Um, but they're really neat. They have uh, four toes and then a, a thumb mm -hmm. on the front, so five toes. Very and then the same back to here, a hand. and these two back here, the two of their feet, oh, sorry, two of those feet are, uh, two of those toes are fused together, so they have yeah. a double nail there, and they don't hmm. have a nail on their thumb over there. That's weird. So they're pretty adapted. They have kind of a, it's like a semi prehensile yeah, tail. They don't really balance. use it to hang, but yeah. mostly to balance. <laughs> don't touch my tail, <laughs> Doug. <Yeah. laughs> I love got the it, hand. Buddy. It's just like a they like grab a it like that. Hand. So yeah, let me tell you what makes these guys the most unique. So they have these this amazing yeah, fur. Let's see if we can get that. Okay. okay. They have this extra skin here. Mm -hmm. There we go. See all that? Look at that. Wow. Huh. Just this huge skin. And it goes from their uh, the fifth toe there all the way up to their armpit. Um, actually, this toe right there. And so it's this gliding mm. skin that they have. They can glide 50 meters um, from tree to tree. And they oh. can actually turn midair with their, their tail and their arm movement. Wow. And uh, it's, it's pretty amazing. They rarely go down to the ground. So that's why they're called sure gliders. Yeah. Was the sugar from? Uh, they like to eat nectar and okay. and uh, sap and fruit, and they're cute. They they're are. very they're sweet, cute. like sugar. Very cute, like sort of, and also extremely soft. Very soft. Such a. I, I've actually, a I've uh, flying squirrels also are extremely soft. They're very soft too. Yeah, yeah it, there must be some kind of reason why that that's helps a thing. them out. Yeah. Short, dense fur yeah. maybe helps them fly. I'm mm -hmm. not sure. I don't know. But uh, yeah, Emily. Uh, let me touch a dead, large flying squirrel, and it was the softest thing I've ever touched. Mm -mm. You touched a chinchilla with me. 
I I don't know. The I should. Is the animal in the world? <laughs> <laughs> <Don't> dispute it. <laughs> She's the expert. Yeah, oh. animal soft. Oh wow. So much poop. Uh. So you are glad this and is not on on yes. your nice suit. Bug exoskeleton. Oh, where are you oh, going? Oh. oh hi. Oh hi. The kid's like where's the it? The bug. There are no more bugs. <laughs> <laughs> he's like, he's like. So I'm done with my. Ear? I'm done with my bug. Can I have some more bug, please? Do you want to hold out your arm? My God. Are you gonna go into your house? Is that where I want to go? I want to go into my house. Get back you to hold the your arm there. Piece. Let's see. Hey! Oh! Yes. Oh, that's so cute. He's he cute. just wanted to go back in his house. <laughs> Snuggle up nice and warm. You want in there too? Here. What are their names? Gizmo and Nemo. Gizmo so this is Gizmo. Nemo. He has a little white tuft on his ear. That's how mm -hmm. I can tell. And then Nemo's in there. And Gizmo, Gizmo's not as excited about jumping back in his pouch. He takes a little bit longer. <laughs> kind of he's gonna he's getting ready. There. On the mic. Do it, do it, do it. I'm glad they get along in such clo close quarters. Yeah, yeah, they're very friendly. Are you not gonna jump? Oh, there, there he goes. Go. <laughs> oh my gosh, thank you guys for coming. Hi. Oh, oh. oh my, they're gonna cuddle back to sleep now. Yay. Gizmo and Nemo, thank you guys. Thank you. Oh. Hi. Oh my gosh. Thank you for coming on the show, Jesse. Thanks for bringing them in yeah, and for taking care of them and for being yeah. a great, um, you know, caretaker for these animals. Mark, so great to have you on the show. Very cool. Love being here. Nice seeing you guys. Yeah. You gotta go. I do. Tell the the Missoula the weather. The weather story. Yep. You gotta it do better it. be good news. Uh, it is good news, actually. Yeah? We're gonna have it, more of this? It's very it's subjective. chances of good news. Well, <laughs> it's subjective. Some people like rain. That's oh, in the yeah. forecast Sunday, but Saturday, I know this is going to be yeah, broadcast most likely afterward, but uh, <laughs> we have a little of everything in the forecast. Well, I'm loving the fall. I am too. Very happy to have it. Uh, thank you also for watching this episode of the SciShow Talk Show. And if you want to keep getting smarter with us here at SciShow, you can go to youtube.com slash SciShow and subscribe. I'm covered in poop. <laughs>